academically and so he shares that with the other guys on the team Dave is a really good hitting instructor and over the last two years he started to share that with the other guys on the team kind of right <laughs> Zach has wonderful hair <laughs> sure but you get to yourself Zach. I can use some yeah Kevin Joe can use a little bit <laughs> But there's something else to this, guys. The lessons you learn here about doing it this way, they are going to last you the rest of your life. Because the truth is, the way you do things affects whether or not other people want to play with you. When you're a little kid and your mom teaches you, you, know, you need to share with your little brother. Why? I don't want to share with him. Well, because it teaches you that if you do these things, if you learn how to get along with people, they want to play against you. It's called sportsmanship. And we do things a little bit different, right? There's a reason why we treat people well when they come here, including our opponents and the umpires, other opposing fans, which won't be at our games this year. Because somewhere along the way, if you treat other people well, they're going to want to play with you. If you don't, and you can think of the teams that we've played before, that you don't want to go play against them because you hate them. Is that going to be us? I sincerely hope not. And we're going to do everything within our power to make sure that that doesn't happen. Why? Because when Joey makes a real estate sale, the manner in which he treats them will dictate whether they tell their friends to go to Joe. Right? You earn a reputation for doing it the right way. And it makes a difference in your career and in other parts of your life. This is how you get friends. But there is another difference with us than with a lot of other people. like all that stuff is pretty common knowledge. The real difference about the way that we do things is that we're going to love people that don't love us back. We're going to share our elephant 
with the people who won't share their moose with us. Why? Why, why do you think, Isaac? I mean, number one, it's like, yeah, we, we were commanded to do that, right? Why would Jesus say, love your neighbor as yourself? And love your enemies? Like, the neighbor part, I get it. Why would we love our enemies? You got any idea? What do you think, Jeff? Reciprocates love. It does. I mean, it reciprocates. So when we go to Madeline, Madeline can't pay us back. She's 72 years old. She lives in the middle of the woods. She doesn't have the resources. You don't give because you're expecting something in return, right? You're giving, number one, because it's the right thing to do. And you're giving because, number two, at some point, you would want someone to do the same thing to you. Right? So you don't give because you're anticipating the return. You're giving because that's what you would want if you were in that situation. There's all kinds of reasons why we do it the way we do it. And what this requires of you is a sacrifice. You've got to die to your selfishness. Some of you guys are going to realize this pretty quickly, that you're not going to be in the starting lineup. We're going to share the elephant with you too. Some of you guys are like, you're seniors who might not be in the starting line. Are you still going to give? Are you going to come to practice every day and give it away to the guy that's taking your job? That's the hallmark of what we do. That's what makes us different. Most programs I know, the guy who took your job, you don't talk to him. You don't cheer for him. What makes us different is that you pour into that guy because you love him first. He's your brother first. That's going to make us different. Because wouldn't you want the same thing? Most of you have experienced that at some point when you've been here. I hope. I mean, I'll never forget when Tage Johnson took Pat Parsons' job and Pat taught him all year long how to be a better first baseman and how to be a better man. Dave, Dave took Tanner Hoffman's job. How did Tanner Hoffman treat you? Said he's his dad. Exactly. Your role is your role. That's what has been given to you. There's lots of things you can't control. You can't control whether I put you in the lineup or not, but you can't control how you respond to it. So I'm just going to close with this. This is from Romans 12. I know I've shared this with a couple of you guys earlier this week. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. What are we doing here tonight? This is a spiritual act of worship. When you play baseball and you sacrifice for each other and you sacrifice for those who can't pay you back, it's a spiritual act of worship. <clears throat> Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Let your minds be renewed, gentlemen. We're not going to conform to what goes on outside those doors. We will be renewed. We'll do it differently. I'm thankful to be here. Really thankful to be here. So I'm just going to ask Dave to open us with a word of prayer because I can't talk anymore. I've already shouted myself out of the voice.